Hello students, welcome to Leela's tutorial. So today we will discuss about production of secondary metabolites. So where these secondary metabolites are produced? These are produced in plants. Normally plants produce certain chemical compounds which are useful for their growth and development and also in reproduction. Right? They are producing some other compounds also but these compounds are not used in growth or reproduction. But these compounds which are secondary metabolites are produced for their protection. Right? To protect them from the invaders, insects and all. So these property we are making use of this in plant tissue culture for large scale production. Right? So here the secondary metabolites are produced in bioreactors. We are producing secondary metabolites by using the plant cells to produce the large number of chemical compounds which are produced by the plant cells. Right? So here first application is here the plant cells are exploited or used for the production of cosmetics, novel foods, agrochemicals, biopharmaceuticals or pharmaceutically active compounds, nutraceuticals, right, terpenoids, alkaloids, toxins or any other sulfur containing compounds. So for example, you have eucalyptus cells which produce an eucalyptus oil, right. So this oil is having some medicinal effect. Even the osimum, the tulsi plant, it is having the medicinal effect. So here, in, instead of growing the plants, right, growing the plants and then extracting their plant extract, we, what we do, we culture the plant cells and directly we can produce a large number or large amount of secondary metabolites without harming to the plants. Is that clear? So let us see the process in detail. So first you are going to select the plant which is having this medicinal properties either in their roots or in the shoot or in any other part of the plant body, right? You can take any flower for the fragrance production, right? You, you can take any leaves for the medicinal compounds. You can take roots for Ayurvedic compounds. So like this, you have many medicines which are obtained even in the cosmetics, even as a food, as a nutrition, toxins and all. So here all these compounds can be produced in bulk that is at large scale. Okay, instead of extracting from the plants, we make use of plant cells for the extraction process. So here first you are going to select the plant which is having this ability to produce the secondary metabolites. Then this plants by means of your plant tissue culture, you are going to isolate the cells and then from the cell culture, you are going to produce a culture, callus. Callus is an undifferentiated mass of cells, right, which is not having any structure or function, right. So when you have this callus, that means it is undifferentiated mass of cell. Now you can, by adding the auxins or cytokinins, whatever you want, that is either the shoot or the root, right, you can produce from that callus okay so now this undifferentiated mass of cells can be differentiated into shoot or root right whatever you require for the production so you are taking the plant cells then callus formation from the callus if you want a root because this plant if this plant is having some medicinal properties or beneficial properties in their roots you don't want shoot now Right? Because only roots are having that compound. So, you go for the root formation. Right? So, here you induce the callus for the root initiation. Root initiation occurs. When the root initiation occurs, the callus gradually transforms or produces the roots. If you don't want any root, if their leaves are having this particular property. If the leaves are having this particular property, what happens? You allow the callus to transform or develop into the shoot system but not the root system. So by adding your oxygen or the cytokinin, right? Oxygen to cytokinin, when you provide oxygen to, oxygen to cytokinin 1 is to 1, it will result in formation of callus. When oxygen is rich and cytokinin is low, it will result in formation of root. When oxygen is low and cytokinin is high, it will result in 
formation of shoot right so now in case there is very minute amount of your pharmaceutically active compound in the root so what you want you want many number of root or root hairs to be formed right so if this is the root these are the root hairs you want more number of root hairs to be formed right but according to the phenotype how many root hairs uh, will be formed for a particular plant you can't change right so what you can do you can induce the root hair formation right by making use of the gram negative organism agrobacterium rhizogenes right so this is a soil bacterium when it is infecting the plant roots right when it is infecting the plant roots it results in hairy growth like structures right the root hairs are formed in bulk so that the metabolite whatever you want to produce it will be produced in large amount where here you have only 3 to 4 root hairs but here you are having many number of root hairs due to the infection by this bacterium so what you do in the lab condition that is in vitro condition the callus is allowed to infect with agrobacterium rhizogenes as a, as a result it will result in more number of rhizome rhizome means it is the root right more number of root hairs are formed so now this is called as root culture it is the root culture and this is the shoot culture and this is hairy root culture this is referred as hairy root culture right so once you get your uh, proper seed right now this has to be what you have to do now you have to increase the amount or increase the number of shoot or the root so what you do you go for the suspension cultures so cell suspension cultures means the liquid media in which the cells will be suspended right here you have grown in petri plates now from the petri plates you are transferring them to 1 liter conical flask right so in the 1 liter conical flask you have the liquid media so in this liquid media now the cell suspension cultures are initiated in order to increase the number of roots shoots or hairy roots right so after inoculation and incubation the complete organ will be formed organ plant organs are shoot and root isn't it so complete organ culture will be formed once you get a complete organ culture what you do you can go for the bulk production directly if you are using the bioreactors directly what happens see you can skip this immobilization step and enter into the bioreactors simply you can put the hairy root uh, root shoot and hairy root in the bioreactor and go for the production but here we are making use of important step which is called as immobilization immobilization is a process of entrapping or encapsulating the shoot or root is that clear whatever organ you have produced that you are going to encapsulate inside the gelatinous substance this everything is a gelatinous substance mostly for immobilization we make use of sodium alginate so these all are alginate gel beads okay we produce uh, organs right either it can be root shoot or hairy root then we are going to immobilize them in last class we have discussed how we are going to immobilize the cell right so immobilization or encapsulating the cell so here by using your sodium alginate you are going to entrap or capture your organs which you have cultured right then you can make use of bioreactor production bioreactor or the fermenter where you are making use of live cells for the production of secondary metabolites or the products is that clear so now once the products are formed see here if you are skipping this process if you are skipping this process only once the cells will be used in the bioreactor once you get the product the cells has to be discarded because the cells get damaged isn't it so in case if you don't want to rupture the cells or damage the cells and if you want to reuse the cells you must use this immobilization process where after bioreactor 
after fermentation or after production of your secondary metabolites you can again wash these uh, sodium alginate beads containing your organs and you can again go for the next process of production is that clear you can reuse this sodium alginate beads with the explants is that clear so here it is must if you want to reuse the produce see all the time you have uh, done so much of struggle in producing these explants right the organ culture you have done it is time taking so for the next step of bio reaction again you need not go for the complete process if you are saving these right if you are saving or protecting the samples by means of immobilization then you can reuse that seed right we call them as seed right you can reuse that seed so after organ culture it is immobilization in gelatinous substance then you are going to add these if it is a root culture in one bioreactor shoot culture in another bioreactor heavy root in another bioreactor inlet of the fresh media right then close the bioreactor allow the secondary metabolites to form then there will be downstream process from the outlet you collect all the immobilized seeds and also the product and go for the downstream process where you purify the secondary metabolites and again the product these beads which are present they can be washed and again used for the second step is that clear our second stage of production so these bio reactors it can be classified into two types right batch bio reactor or continuous bio reactor in case of batch reactor you will be adding these immobilized beads along with the explant right inlet of the media then you will be closing it right when you close this batch reactor the uh, cells what they do they produce the secondary metabolites so from the sampling point you will check whether the secondary metabolites are produced up to level or not if they are produced you collect the product right and again wash the beads and sterilize the bio reactor and again start the another set or another batch of fermentation is that clear that is called as batch bio reactors or batch fermentation in case of continuous bio reactors here you have the fresh media tank inside you will be placing all the immobilized beads any one right any one type you are going to place right not single you are going to place hundreds of immobilized beads right the fresh media will be allowed continuously and the secondary metabolites are allowed to produce continuously and there will be outlet for collecting so it is a continuous process right the here as the media which you are adding is getting depleted so secondary metabolite production will be stopped at some stage right where so you have to stop the production collect the product and again start new production after sterilizing the bio reactor whereas here there is no break continuous supply of media or the nutrition is there so continuous production of secondary metabolites will be there right so here so as it is a long time also the cells will not get ruptured right due to the internal conditions of the bio reactor because the sodium alginate will be protecting your explant or the organ right so there will be continuous addition of media and continuous collecting of the secondary metabolites along with the used up media right so it is uh, carried out for more than 6 months till the contamination is observed okay so like this after these batch or continuous process you can go for the secondary metabolite collection and by means of downstream process you can purify that secondary metabolites and give it for marketing is that clear if you have any doubts put it in comments and for batch and uh, continuous bio reactors we'll discuss in detail in next class okay subscribe for further videos